Cult of the Lamb is an interesting little indie title. Revealed a while ago with a charming and disturbing trailer, it's a blend of two genres we've all come to know and love in recent years. One part Animal Crossing and one part Hades roguelike, it has a lot of bases to cover to be a good game. Let's take a quick look and see if this little lamb is worth saving or better off on the chopping block. The basic premise of Cult of the Lamb is pretty simple. You're tasked with gathering followers for your cult, building out a small town to support them, and of course to support yourself, and to defeat four gods who wanted to sacrifice you. The more followers you have, the more facilities and features you unlock for your goals. So to start off, let's look at the followers. Followers have a few functions once one's been found and accepted. Their main function is to provide devotion. Devotion allows you to unlock further facilities of your town as well as your abilities in your adventuring. The more followers you have, the more you can harvest from them and get access to new things. But it's not quite that simple. To keep your harvest solid, you have to maintain your followers through various town managements. By creating facilities like beds, farms, kitchens, worship locations, and even toilets, your followers can do various tasks that keep the flow of the cult going smoothly. It's a lot of mechanics and work at first glance, but once things get going, a lot of it is relegated to the background, thankfully. Your followers also gather while you're out adventuring. Gathering wood, breaking rocks, cleaning, and more is all done slowly in the background while you are adventuring. I never really found myself needing to do anything so desperately that I had to dedicate a lot of time to any one thing, which is a really great feeling for a town management game. I was most surprised that the followers had to be taken care of so much. Keeping them happy and content keeps the cult without fuss. Stuff like feeding and keeping the area clean are mostly up to the player at first, but as time goes on, more options unlock to automate a lot of the process. It was pretty enjoyable to see my town go into a more autopilot status as things got bigger and more complicated, but the basics of management still fell to me as the player. So in all, I was relieved and happy to see that the base management was fairly involved, but also simple enough to set what I need and move on to the next task without much struggle. Followers can also give various side quests at random. These can be simple things like build a certain building or find a particular item in the dungeon. Since tasks don't take too much work, I gladly did many of them and the rewards from followers tend to be a nice chunk of devotion to level up. Still, I didn't do all of them that came my way, which tends to upset the followers, but then again, I'm the leader, not them. You can also hold rituals and sermons in your cult church, and they give a variety of effects. Feasts let you feed all of your followers at once and increase their happiness, but a sacrifice will increase their fear while boosting devotion. There's a small list of positives and negatives to consider when doing any of them. Sermons let you harvest devotion to unlock base unlocks, as well as reassuring your flock that they are loved. But once again, despite all of these mechanics stacking up and getting quite large, the game is actually quite easy to take care of and keep track of all of these small things. Once your town is all set for a while, you can set off in one of the game's four different areas. Each area is a randomly generated grouping for you to take on. My favorite part of this is that the map actually lets you choose from different paths, but it'll also tell you what you can expect in each. For example, if you're after another follower, then there's an icon for that so you know which path to tackle on your way to the reward that you want. It's simple but really effective, and I appreciate it not wasting my time. But what about the combat in general? Well, it's a pretty simple game in that regard. You have a basic attack with your weapon and a limited special, and that's about it. Of course there's a standard dodge as well, but combat in Cult of the Lamb chooses simplicity over complexity. Since it's a roguelike, each time you enter for an adventure, you're given a randomly generated weapon and special. These have a small variety of types, and your options actually increase as your town upgrades, but no matter what, they get the job done. There's also a chance to swap out in dungeons as you make your way through the challenges to the boss areas. 
Things can get pretty hectic in boss battles, but overall the game doesn't really seem to want your first time through a dungeon to be all that difficult, with lower enemy numbers and health. So once the main boss in the area has been killed, the difficulty ramps up quite a bit for any subsequent adventures you may want to do. I personally like this because it keeps things more interesting instead of running in and re-blasting through an area with ease, but I can see some finding this annoying when you just want a few extra resources. Overall, the combat is quite simple and it's not too stressful until one of the major bosses arrives. Suddenly the game turns into a light bullet hell with dodging and attacking, but it's rewarding and sometimes difficult. Still, I was able to complete the game without too much trouble. There's also the tarot card mechanic. Tarot cards are various passives that add to your lamb's arsenal. As you play, you can unlock certain cards, and as you adventure, the tarot shopkeeper gives a random assortment of them from the ones that you unlocked. They can also be found sometimes in dungeons as drops for completing rooms or just as treasure in general. These have a nice assortment of abilities like increasing health, speed buffs, dropping a bomb when rolling, and more. It's definitely worth working towards getting as many as possible, but a lot of them felt like buffs I would rather have overall, like HP buffs and whatnot. But I enjoyed the process of finding and unlocking them for my dungeon runs. There's also a small variety of mini games to play like dice and fishing. These are all used to gain extra resources and complete side quests which of course help you unlock more features. There's a nice little flow to the game with all of these side objectives, but none felt like they were bogging down the experience too much for me, so I couldn't really ask for more in that regard. I personally skipped most of the mini games after their introduction, but I don't feel like I was missing anything as a result. One thing I will be negative about is the Switch port. When I began playing the game, it ran fine as expected, and while not as smooth as the PC or current gen console versions, it did the game justice. But as I played the game and the town grew, the performance of the game just started tanking more and more. I'm talking about severe hitching and pausing at all times, but especially in town. I'm not sure if it was a RAM issue with the Switch or or what was going on, but the closer I got to the end, the more the game seemed to struggle, and I had to quit out of the game several times to reset it to proceed. It's definitely something that needs to be worked on, and hopefully it does get addressed, but for now I would say this is better off played on something other than the Switch. So overall, Cult of the Lamb is a nice little roguelike Animal Crossing hybrid. Despite being quite heavy in management mechanics, it's also fairly easy to keep track of and progress. The combat is simple but rewarding to play, with a nice ramp up for boss areas. The game is also charming, yet kind of creepy in its overtones, but I went into this game very hopeful and I came out pleasantly satisfied. If any of the gameplay or impressions of Cult of the Lamb spoke to you, I think it's a pretty great game for the asking price. Anyway, thanks for watching and reading this review. Sorry this one's a bit all over the place, I'm recovering from COVID, but I also wanted to play this game during my sickness time, and now I wanted to talk about it now that I'm feeling a little bit better, but I'm still not 100%. Took me a long time to put this together. <laughs> it was honestly a struggle recording the audio for it, but hopefully the next one's better. Hopefully I can focus down more and hopefully give you more content as things uh, heal up in my personal life, and hopefully you're doing okay too. Anyway, I hope to see you again next time. Have a good day, evening, rest of your week, whenever you're watching this, and I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you again next time.